This teaching is going to be on God and science. What's the difference between the two? We're going to see what the Bible says and we're going to see what scientists say. And then you'll have to pick which one you want to believe. Because they do contradict each other. But before I get started, let's talk about the Word of God. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. We need to believe that the Bible is the perfect Word of God. Because if it isn't, then it's worthless. And if it's worthless, then the Lord can't hold us accountable for the way we live. But God's not that way. He has given us His perfect Word, the Bible. So we need to believe all the words in the Bible. This is the way we get to know our Lord, and this is the way we get to know how we should live, what we should believe in. In Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Private interpretation. We have a lot of private interpretation. When you read the Bible, you read the Bible as a study book, not a book that you just read through. Each verse you read, you need to stop and study and meditate on it and then go on. It's not a book that you, it's a speed reading book. It's not a book that you read and just put it, put it aside. Okay, I read the Bible and start reading another book. The Bible is a book that you study. And if you study it correctly with the power of the Holy Spirit, you will not be coming up with uh, private interpretations. Jeremiah 23, verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. These are men who are not led by the Lord to speak what they are speaking. It says it right here. Also in verse 25. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophecies lie in my name, says I have dreamed, I have dreamed. There are prophets out there, and prophets are preachers. There are preachers out there who are saying in the name when it's a lie. They're not doing it in the name, in the name of Jesus, that is. So we got to watch out for these kind of men, the ones who have their own private interpretation. Verse 21 of Second Peter, chapter 1. For the prophecies came not in no time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the, Holy, by the Holy Ghost. So it says, these prophets, these men of old, men of God who really prophesied, it wasn't by their will, it was by the Holy Spirit in what they prophesied, men of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. We need the Holy Spirit to understand the words of God. The Holy Spirit reveals to us what the Scriptures are saying. So you need to be a born-again Christian to understand the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Again, he's saying the same thing here. It's from the Word of God. We receive it from the truth of God, His words, not of men. John seventeen seventeen. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Word of God is truth. There's no lies here. There's no mistakes here. There are no contradictions here. This is the perfect truth of God. Proverbs six twenty three. For the commandments is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instructions are in the way of life. This is, all, this is everything we can get out of the Word of God. All these verses here. Now there are men who will say otherwise. That is not the perfect Word of God. And they even have men that say there's contradictions in the Bible. When you bring any contradiction to me, let me study it, and I will show you that, it's not a, that it is not a contradiction. I believe in the Word of God, and I do believe it's the perfect Word of God. 
the scriptures. Psalms 19.7 The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the souls. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The ways of the Lord are perfect. That is why the words of God can save lives. It can touch people's soul, their heart. No man can do that. Only the word of God. You got psychiatrists out there. They just listen to you. And they might put something in your head. But they cannot touch your soul. Only the Lord can touch your soul, your heart. You can be sure that what God says is true. And what and making his wisdom simple. That's what it says right here. His wisdom is very simple to understand. Men have made the word of God difficult to understand. But if you read, if you study the Bible, there will not be any difficulties. Whatever he says in the Bible, whatever, if there's a question in the Bible, he'll answer it in the Bible. It's not something you have to go look for. The answers to the questions in the Bible are in the Bible. You just got to keep on reading and know how to read. Romans 7, 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandments holy, and just, and good. All this is the Word of God. All these verses I've given you, this is the Word of God shown that it is true. That is, that it is the perfect Word of God. It's not written by men who, men who wrote down, well, we think this is what the Bible says. No. It was by the inspiration of God that these men sat down and wrote the Bible. They did not do it in the flesh or on their own. Amos 3.3 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Those of you who say they're, you're born again Christians, but you don't agree with the scriptures, the Lord's saying right here, can you, how can you all walk together? How can you walk with God if you're not in agreement with Him? And I'm talking about the whole Bible. Not just some things. There's a lot of Christians out there, well, I believe that, but I don't believe this. Well, you're not walking in agreement with Him. You can't walk with the Lord unless you're in agreement through the Bible. Not just certain verses, but the Bible. James 4.4 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The Lord is saying that if you're a friend with the world, then you can't believe the world and believe the Word of God. That's why I'm giving this teaching. You have to choose on whether you're going to believe the Word of God or you're going to believe what the world says. Isaiah 55, 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. His ways aren't our ways. And I give you a couple of examples. It's, he says, if you need money, What's he say to do? He says to give. You tell somebody who's, who's in need to give, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. And then when he says, if someone hits you on the cheek, turn the other. Let him hit that one also. Most of us is ready to fight back. So God's ways are not our ways. I want to show all this before I get started. To make sure that you're going to believe the Word of God. Because if you're not, then this, you might as well go ahead and turn off this CD because what I'm giving you is the Word of God which I believe in. If you don't look at the Word of God as being the perfect book written by the Lord, then go ahead and turn off this CD because you don't want to listen to the rest of it because everything I'm going to give you is scriptures. What the scripture says on how old the earth is, where did man come from? It's different from what man says, the world. But if you want to know, then keep the, the CD on. Jeremiah 15, uh, excuse me, Jeremiah 51, 15. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom. And hath stretched out the heavens by his understanding. This is the Lord here. He has done this. The Lord God has done this. Colossians 1, verses 15 through 17. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Right here, this verse is saying, You can see Jesus, the man, but not Jesus, 
who is God. Now I have a teaching on Jesus and God being the same. And if you want it, all you have to do is call the number on the CD and I'll send it to you. I believe in the Trinity. I do believe Jesus is God. And that's what it's saying right here. Verse 16. For by him were all things created. We're talking about Jesus. That are in the heavens and that are in the earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And, it, and he is before all things. And by him all things consist. It says it right here. Jesus did all this. And he holds it all together. Verse 17. He holds all this together. I'm showing that Jesus created the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 1, 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who made the worlds? The Son. Worlds meaning everything in space. Genesis 1.16 It says, And God made the two lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light, light to rule the night. And he also said he made the stars. So the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Jesus. Ephesians 3, verse 9 and 12. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the ministry, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, like I said before, if you're in agreement with me that this is the perfect word of God, the Bible, then understand these verses I'm reading. Jesus created everything. Verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. We can have boldness and confidence on what Jesus says. Whatever he says in the Bible, we can have confidence in it and faith in it. And we can tell others. So I'm showing that Jesus Christ created the heavens and the earth. So if Jesus is the creator, then who could be more qualified than Jesus to tell us how he did it? Galatians 2.8 Beware lest any man spoil you, spoil you through your philosophies and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking rather than from Christ. Because there's a lot of men who do that. There's a lot of men that have theories their own philosophies on what they think it's like or how it was done. It says, Beware of those. Beware of those men. That's what it's saying here. Titus 1 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. We must have a strong belief in the word and whatever the message he has taught us. We tell others and teach them and show them that those who oppose the Word of God are wrong. That's why when you listen, while you're listening to this CD, you need to write all this down. So that way you can take it to someone else and show them, hey, this is the way it is. This is the way God made it or did it. We should always be ready to give an answer on what we believe. That's what the Bible says. I'm here to tell you those who teach something else besides God's words. Or foolish. They're foolish. Proverbs 28:26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Right here it says it. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Not after the Lord, but after his own heart. Matthew 7:24 says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So we're wise when we build our house, which is us, on the word of God. Because the rock is the Lord. So that makes us wise. That's what the Lord says. Those of us who believe in him and build our house on his foundation, we're wise. 1 Corinthians 2.14 but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. 
Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They're foolish unto a man who doesn't know the Lord. Matthew 7.26 And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. If you're not building your house, your life, on the Word of God, you're foolish. And those are the scriptures that I just gave in, I've given you to show you can either be foolish or you can be wise. It's up to you. We all have that choice to make. We can be wise and listen and obey the Word of God and accept it. Or we can be foolish and go on our own heart, what we think, what we believe, what our opinion is. It's up to you. One of the things evolutionists don't like to talk about is a lot of what they believe is based on assumptions. They go back, this man said this, or this, and the man before him said this, and you just keep going back until, you know, it just gets to where, well, that's what he thinks, that's his theory. Well, that's based on man's assumption. First Timothy chapter 6, 20 and 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding, avoiding profane and vain babbling and opposition of science falsely so called, which some profess have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Timothy says, Guard what God has entrusted you with. He said, Avoid godliness, foolish discussions, which those with those who oppose with their so called knowledge. They oppose the word of God with their so called knowledge. He said to avoid them. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. And I call it foolishness because that's what the Lord called it. Those who who preach or teach other than God's word that goes against God's words are foolish. And it says to avoid them. A lot of what scientists believe in is based on assumptions, like I said before. In verse 20, it says their lack of knowledge proves that they're not 100% sure of what they believe. Their lack of knowledge. The Lord doesn't have us assuming anything. He tells us just like it is in His Word. Exactly. Second Peter 3.8 But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. What seems to be long to men is not long at all to God. A thousand years to us is like one day with the Lord. He doesn't measure time the way men do. This is what this verse is talking about. Please understand the scriptures and what it's saying. And just say, just say, uh, okay, well, I, I, I believe that, it, that one day was a thousand years because he couldn't create heaven and earth in six days. I believe it was uh, each day was like a thousand years. Well, if you're going to look at it that way, or if men that you, that you know look at it that way, then ask them this question. What's the times, if they read their Bible, from, from Adam to Noah, and it always gives the, the generations, the time, and the years, it takes studying, but it does it. From Adam to Noah, 1,656 years. From Noah to Abraham, it was 430 years. From Abraham to Christ, it was 2,000 years. And from Christ to now, it was about 2,010 years. So the earth and the universe is about a little over 6,000 years old. Again, you can believe the scientists or you can believe the Word of God. Also, if those days was a thousand years, well, the Bible says God created the plants on the third day. So if He created the plants on the third day, and what do plants need to grow? They need the sun. God created the sun on the fourth day. Now how did these plants live for a thousand years without the sun? It's simple questions. I tell you, the Word of God is simple. Men have made it complicated. But if you made plants first, and they were supposed to go a thousand years without the sun until God created the sun, 
they wouldn't have been able to survive. It was a 24 hour day. Also, on the fifth day, he says he created the birds. Well, it was on the sixth day that he created the creepers, the insects. Again, birds eat insects. Now, did these birds have to go a thousand years before they were able to eat insects? I don't think so. The Word of God is simple. I'm showing it right here. There's nothing complicated about it. If you just read it and believe it, it's not complicated. In Genesis 1, verse 29 and 30, people and animals ate grass. And they ate greens, they ate fruit. The same thing in the millennium. It says the lion will lay with the lamb. And also they will be eating grass and greens. Fruits. They didn't eat each other. Animals did not eat each other for a meal. It says it in the Bible. Look at these commentaries on TV about dinosaurs. It shows them fighting each other so they can eat each other. Not true. Genesis 121, and God created great whales, which also the, the word whales also means big animals, not just the whale. And we'll see that in Job chapter 40, verses 15 through 24, speaks about the same time he made man, he also made a big and powerful animal, and they ate grass. That's what it says. And in Isaiah 27, 1, speaks about dragons. And they did have dragons. It's not a myth, and the dragons are for real. In Job, chapter 41, verses 19 through 21, it says there was fire dragons. And also in Isaiah 36, 30, verse 6, speaks about a fire flying serpent or dragon. This is the word of God. We did have dragons. And we did have dragons who who um, who had fire coming out of their uh, mouths. This is for real. This is the word of God. But after the flood, I'm sure the Lord saw that there was no reason to have this. So we don't have them now. But they were here once. The word of God says it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 39 says man comes from man, animals come from animals, fish come from fish, and birds come from birds. That's what the, 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 the Bible says. That's what the scriptures say. Man came from man, animals from animals, fish from fish, and birds from birds. Now if you look at the book of Jonah, the Lord called the fish a well. First he called it a great fish, then he called it a well. So a well is a fish. God called the well a fish. But scientists now say now that the well is a mammon. Also in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verses 11 through 18, the Lord says on what birds we can't eat. He's talking about birds. He said now these birds you can't eat. And in there, he put the bat as one of the birds. So the Lord called the bird, I mean the bat, a bird. Again, scientists, men, now put the bat in as a mammal. So I see, see how the men always have to change what God says. Ch children are being taught in, the, in our schools evolution. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26-27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. Now if man says we came from animals, then right here I read this verse, then my God must have been an animal? Because I was created in his image and man says we're animals, we came from animals. I don't think so. We were created in the image of God, not the image of animals. That's why I'm saying, please, if you're going to believe the word of God, believe it. Mark 10 verses 4 through 7 God said he made people at the beginning. People. He didn't say he just made animals and then we turned into people. He said he made people at the beginning. Genesis 2 verse 7 And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. Animals do not have a soul. We all know that. 
animals do not have a living soul. So we did not come from animal. The Lord breathed life into us and we became a living soul. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thy return, until thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. He didn't say anything about us coming out of animal. Now this was a very short teaching. I really didn't have to make it very long. Because like I said, the main part I wanted you to understand is, do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Word of God? If you are a born-again Christian and you can say, yes, I believe the Bible is was inspired by God to be written, then all these verses I just read, you'll believe in. And that tells you uh, how old the earth is, like I showed before. Because the Bible has a timetable. It shows it. you got to study it, but it's there. Also creation, you know, uh, how he created. He created, like I said, the birds. And he think birds couldn't live for a thousand years without the creepers, which were insects. It's just real simple. Please, don't, don't let men make the Bible very complicated to understand. Don't let them do that. The Word of God says that. Don't let them do that. Don't listen to them. If they're coming to you other than the Word of God, uh, shut the door. Let them go. Because most, most times they will confuse you. And who's the author of confusion? The devil. So this is why I made this teaching. So you can see the difference between God and science. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for giving us this time that we can study your words. Your perfect words, Father God. Thank you for loving us, loving us to, enough to know how great you are. How powerful you are. And that you are the Almighty God. Thank you, Father. I pray that we will we'll be pleasing, we will walk being pleasing to you each day that we wake up, each day that you have given us here on earth. I pray we'll walk in the footsteps that's, that you have given us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this time. And thank you for your words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.